Yeah, so in this uh, module here, we're going to go ahead and cover uh, three different things. First is going to be the main components as well as the main circuits and then go into actual signal flow of the board. So we're going to actually go in, make sure you have a hash board right in front of you. So that way you can actually take a look and follow along and try to identify all the different components and circuits. So it doesn't really matter exactly what hash board you have. It can be any kind of maker model. Just make sure you have one so that way we can go ahead and get through this. All right, welcome to the ASIC Ninja Academy. I'm going to be your host, your trainer, Austin Childress. So we're going to show you all these different hash boards and show you the different uh, main circuits on those boards so that way we can get uh, an idea of all the main components and the signal flow on the hash board. Uh, with this knowledge, you'll be able to apply it to other hash boards as well, and it'll help you get a better understanding on how these boards work. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so in today's module, we're going to go ahead and cover all the main circuits and components on a hash board, as well as go over signal flow, so the direction all the signals go through the board. This will help you understand and diagnose the hash board itself by having an understanding of all those circuits. So let's go ahead and dive right in. And so first thing up would definitely be the power rail, uh, which would be right here on the S9. Um, uh, we also got the IO data port right here. So that's what sends uh, the input and output data from the control board to the hash board. From there, we have a DC to DC circuit. So what includes would be the PIC chip itself. Right there, it's that uh, cockroach looking thing. Also includes a set of MOS chips. These are kind of act like switches. So the PIC tells this little triode to turn on and off, which then opens and closes these MOS chips. Uh, once the voltage flows, it goes to a DC to DC circuit. In this board, this S9, it actually has a step down uh, on it. So that step down uh, takes the voltage and drops the voltage on the board. And it uses that for the rest of the board. It also sends that signal over to what's called a boost. So this boost does what it sounds like. It steps up the voltage. And from there, this boost powers the last few domains. Uh, what a domain is, is it's a group of ASIC chips, which are actually on the front side here. Um, this is a these heat sinks on the top are attached with what's called a black glue. And on the bottom, as you can see, it's attached with solder. So each domain here is also powered by an LDO. Uh, this is an older model, an S9, so it actually doesn't have LDOs except for maybe in the last domains. Reason being is, is the ASIC chips themselves also have their own LDO internally. So all those signals uh, go from first chip to last chip. Uh, there's five main signals on the ASIC. And then there is one signal, doesn't matter the hash board, I call it the return signal. It goes from the last chip to the first chip. Uh, on the S9, we have our first chip here, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and it just keeps going from the center up to the top until you get here. Then once you go there, it switches over here and then goes from the center down until finally you get to the 63rd chip right there. Now all that signal goes to this last chip here, and then that return signal carries all that data back to the first chip, it collects all the temperature sensor data from the chips themselves, as well as the temperature sensor on the board. And so that's basically how signal flows on this board here. All boards are very similar to this. Yeah, so now we have a S17 board here, and this board is a newer gen, not the newest gen, but this actually uses solder to attach the top heat sinks as well as the bottom. Now, if we're going to go through the circuit flow on this, the signal flow, again, we have the IO data port right here. We also have our positive and negative terminal. Now, it seems to be pretty universal. The negative terminal is going to be right next to the data port or the ground. And if you're in doubt, you can always look at these capacitors here and you can see how they're actually pointing to the ground. Uh, from there, we also have the pick chip. 
this is a little different on this 17 board. Uh, it's a DS rather than a PIC. We also have something that was introduced, which is the EEPROM. So originally, all the information was stored on the PIC chip, uh, including all the board data and everything. But now the PIC only stores the voltage rate information. Uh, they store all the other stuff like the serial number, the bin on the chips, the uh, temperature sensor data, all that's now stored in the EEPROM. And so this PIC will then open up some triodes or transistors and then it'll come over here to the boost. So this whole circuit is the boost. Uh, you see that big black square is actually your step up IC. It's a little smaller on the S9. The silver thing, a lot of people think that's the boost. That's actually just an inductor. So L stands for inductor, C for capacitor, R for resistor, D for diode. And then you have like the Q uh, chips, Y chips, N chips, all the specialty chips, like the step up IC. So again, this is your boost. This steps up the voltage. So it takes the voltage in, it actually runs it constant. Once these MOS chips open, it sends the voltage to the boost, which then again steps up the voltage and powers the last few domains. There's also something that I forgot on the S9. Uh, all boards have at least one, if not more, is a clock crystal oscillator. It's that silver thing right there. A megahertz clock crystal oscillator. Now, also, uh, right here, as you can see, the I.O. data port, that takes your 3.3 volts from the control board, and it goes through what's called level switches or level converters. These take that 3.3 volts, and it actually drops it down to 1.8 volts for the rest of the board to use. So this chip right here is your Fat Boy LDO. It takes your 1.8 volts and sends it to your domain of your last domain. The rest of them look like these smaller ones. This right here is a five pin LDO. They're the most common uh, used LDOs, although you wanna make sure you're using the right one. They might look the same, but you can't just transfer this over to a 19, for example. Um, another thing is, is that when you're testing for voltage, you're gonna wanna go on this pin right here and then the ground of the heat sink of that domain. So any of those chips in the domain. This board itself actually has four chips per domain, unlike the S9 had three. And so again, this boost powers the last few domains right here through these LDOs. Um, all the signals go from first chip to last chip. And the way that you can tell where the first chip usually is is where that clock crystal oscillator is. So this will actually tell you that your first chip or the group of the first chips is right here. And then the boost is over here, so we can assume that the last chip is going to be right here. If we actually follow the traces, we can see that it snakes around like this until it finally gets to the last chip. So all the signals go from the first chip all the way to the last chip, and then there's one signal that carries all that data back from the last chip all the way to the first chip, carrying all the hashing data, as well as the temperature data from each ASIC, as well as the temperature sensors along the way. Now this 17 actually has four temp sensors. Um, the S9 only had one. So you actually have two on the exhaust here and two on the intake. Uh, as you can see, the heat sinks on the intake are a little smaller than the bigger ones. Uh, the reason for this is, is as the air goes through, it doesn't need to be as hot, uh, as much surface area, as these chips are gonna be cooler. But as it gets to the second row, that air has already been heated up a little bit. So as it goes through the heat sinks, you need more surface area to actually cool down the ASIC. All right, so here is a S19 board. This actually has 76 chips. Uh, we're going to go through the signal flow on this board. So we can see here our power terminals. Negative is going to be right next to the I.O. data port. We also can see the DC to DC circuit as well as our level switches. Got our PIC chip, our EEPROM. EEPROM looks like a little spider. That PIC is kind of like a cockroach. 
Um, if in doubt on the, on the positive and negative, again, you can see the capacitor here is pointing to ground. Uh, the pick opens up these MOS chips. And what's a little different about the 19 is that they actually included a secondary boost. So this is what they call risky power. Reason being is it's the highest voltage on the board. So the pick opens this up, turns the voltage on, and then this then opens up these MOS. And then it goes to your boost. So here's your boost. Again, that steps up the voltage for your last few domains. Here's the LDOs. You got your fat boy LDO as well as your regular one. This one's going to be your what they call a PLL LDO, and this is just your regular LDO. This one takes your 1.8 volts and then it transfers it through this LDO and then it comes out as 0.8 volts for your domain to use. Now, as you can see, this board has two chips per domain. Clock crystal oscillator is right here, so this is going to be your first chip. Your boost is over here. We can follow the traces and see that this is your last chip, and it just kind of snakes through this whole board. And again, as you can see, these temperature sensors look identical to these fat boy LDOs, so just be sure not to get them confused. But in essence, these LDOs help distribute the voltage evenly amongst the domains. And so again, all the signals go from the first chip all the way to the last chip. And then you have a return signal that goes from the last chip going through all the temperature sensors along the way until finally it gets to your first chip out to the control board. Yeah, so now we have a micro BT what's minor board here. A little different, but very similar at the same time. So again, we have our power terminals. Go figure, the negative is right next to the I.O. data port. Now, they actually used a PIC EEPROM combo. It kind of looks like the temperature sensors or fat boy LDOs. It's got the 8-pin, but it's actually a PIC slash EEPROM. You have your level switch right here that turns the 3.3 volts into 1.8 volts for the board to use. You also have your boost circuit right here. Again, that powers your last few domains. And it does that through these LDOs here. So as you can see, there's two chips per domain. Now on this board, there's actually a bunch of clock crystal oscillators. There's one right here next to the first chip, another one here. So that's for this group, this one's for this group, and so on and so forth. It's going to be your last chip, it's going to be your first chip, and just kind of snakes around. And then you also have your temperature sensor right here. So all the signals flow through this board. Only difference is, is the name of the return signal. They decided to call it TXD instead of RIRORX. That signal goes from last chip through the temperature sensor back to the first chip out the I.O. data port. As you can see, this also does not have any MOS to protect the hash board. And another key feature is, is if you look at the back, it's actually aluminum on the back. So how we rework these boards is completely different. We actually have to use a heat plate on these in order to heat the whole board instead of using a heat gun.